So in case you don't know, home prices are up 45% since March of 2020. This is on a national level. And somehow the Case Shiller National Home Price Index went up 5.1% year over year from November 2022 to November 2023. How is it possible that we have home prices increasing at 5.1% where in the same time frame we had interest rates surge to 23 year highs? And there's only one answer to this, one that is significant, and that would be our inventory, which is the number of homes available for sale. Now, this is a year over year study, but I'm pretty sure that year over year next year, when 12 months from now, when this report comes out here, what we're gonna find is that we actually had price decreases. Even though the case shiller is forecasting another 3% increase for 2024, I don't think that's gonna happen. And the reason I say that is because I've been tracking the inventory for a whole year, over a year actually, and what I found is that we have almost triple the amount of homes for sale than we did at the beginning, like about 12, 13 months ago. So it's just a matter of catching up to what's inevitable. In my opinion, inevitably, we're gonna have prices go down. We're not gonna have them go up again 3%. Now we went up and unless our interest rates have a big change, we're not gonna see prices come down. And I mean a big change. We need at least a one and a half to 2% decrease of interest rates for a whole bunch of people to just come out of the woodwork and start buying properties again. And also don't forget, there's so many people out there that have 3% interest rates, 4%, 5%. Heck, I'm sitting on a 3.25. I have another home at a 2.875. I have another investment property at 4.0. I am not going to be selling any of those properties anytime soon because I'm not interested in trading my low interest rate in for a high interest rate. And literally over 80% of the population is in that same predicament where they're not willing to sell and tr exchange for what's an average right now of 7.65%. That is on a primary occupancy and it also includes paying down points. And if you don't know what points are, one point is 1% of the loan amount and you can basically buy down your interest rate. So if you have extra money at closing and you wanna buy down your interest rate and have your payment be a little lower every single month, then you can pay up front a whole bunch of money and lower your interest rate for the entire 30 year period of your loan. Now this article also mentions that, you know, we are up 45% on average home prices since March of 2020. But that's not really fair to say. I mean, in March of 2020, I think it was March 10th or 12th, uh, the president had announced that we have a problem with the pandemic and everything crashed. The stock market crashed, people slashed the prices on the homes, a whole bunch of people listed their home really low. So that's not really fair because that was an anomaly in the statistics. So they're kind of saying they've gone up 45% since it had a very big bottoming. Listen, I will link this article in the description, but what's really interesting is that they're saying that even though we had this price increase, the number of homes sold, not counting the new construction, because new construction is a little different animal, but just of all the resales, when you compare how many more or less homes have sold in that same time frame, we had 18.7% less resales than we did the prior year from 2022 to 2023. The forecast for interest rates by the end of 2024 is 6%. So let me ask you, and please tell me in the comments, would you actually sell your home and give up your low interest rate and exchange it for 6% interest rate if by the end of 2024, that's what we have as a standard, as a normal rate? I know I wouldn't, but I'm really curious what you would do. Please let me know.